What would I say to a graduating senior? I think it depends on whether we're talking about a senior who completed their four years uh, and their senior year of sports uh, or someone who was a spring senior and, and had that opportunity taken away from them. For someone who's completed their four years, I would tell them to, to sit down and think through their memories um, and really log away those things that were special. What did they learn from their four years? How did it change them and affect them? Um, reach out to friends and, and coaches and those that um, were an integral part of their career. For someone who's lost their opportunity, I would tell them to keep in mind that God does have a plan. And if their identity was not wrapped up in their sport, to remember this was just one thing that God allowed them to do. In, in a lot of ways, it would be similar to someone who had a, a career-ending injury. At that time, it's time to kind of step back, reassess, and move forward because that's all we can do. And, you know, that can be in several different ways. You may be given the opportunity to, to come back and, and repeat a senior year, as a lot of people are going to do at, at the higher level in sports, especially Division One and Two, if they were on scholarship. Others may not want that opportunity. Um, you, know, you begin to focus on those things that are important to you. And we're seeing that as much as we love sport, at the end of the day, there are other things that are more important. And that includes relationships and family. And, and caring for others. And we can pour ourselves into that and fill that gap. Uh, but I think overall for all seniors, um, to take a deep breath, I know they're, they're, it's easy to hit the panic button right now trying to figure out, well, how do I graduate? How do I get on? Colleges across the country are working on how to help you walk across the stage at the end of this time so that you can move on with life. You can already see that, you know, the, the businesses, the, the, the economy of our country is, is in turmoil right now. There's gonna be a hiring frenzy at some point when all of this is over as businesses start to re-engage and start to build up again. You'll be a part of that workforce and you'll have that degree in your hand and you'll be able to move forward with confidence because you know that you were prepared through your experience at Grove City. So hold on to that carrot, hold on to that nugget of truth, work your way through the present, be engaged actively with those that are around you in the best way that you can, serve others, and just stay in that waiting mode until God opens up the door and he'll open up a door for you to move forward with your life. I would say that I have two coaches, a high school coach and a college coach who were my inspiration for moving into coaching. My high school coach was my history teacher, became my mentor, um, coached me in four years of track. And then when I was in college, was running track and he invited me to come back and start working as a high school coach. It was my first experience as a high school coach. Um, he took me four years, worked me through as an assistant. Um, he eventually split the head coaching duties with me to help me understand what it meant to be in the head coaching role and all the dynamics that went along with that. Um, so he was phenomenal in just mentoring and training me, uh, taking me as an apprentice and preparing me to be a head coach. My other one is Coach Roland Ortmeyer. He was my football coach and track coach at the University of Laverne where I went to college. And he just was a phenomenal person, impacted I don't know how many people over a 42, uh, 42 year career as a college football coach. And one of the things that impacted me um, with him was that he did this as a ministry. His goal was to impact the lives of the young men that he was coaching. And, and it was so personal that he and his wife were, were very clear that, that um, they wanted to spend time with their athletes. They would have us over to their house um, each week. They tried to have three or four guys come over and have dinner with them once a week. Um, they were intentional about how they served the team um, at a, in an era when we still had um, a staff that would come in and do the laundry, they chose to do the laundry themselves, something they had been doing for, for over 30 years where they brought all 80 uniforms to their house, they scrubbed out the grass stains, um, they washed them, they dried them, they hung them, they folded them and brought them back to the campus. Um, even though they had a staff and, and I asked Coach Rotmeyer about that one time and he said, it's one of the ways that I was able to, to intentionally serve my athletes, even though I do have a staff that I can hand this over to. And that really stuck with me and it's been a part of um, what I've tried to do as a coach ever since. There was an old saying that said, when the going gets tough, the tough go fishing. That's where I would be. Uh, when I lived in Tennessee, there was this little slough about a couple miles from our house that I would go to. It was a quiet location that only locals knew about. And in the slough, there were a lot of areas where you could go and I could actually set up a tent if you wanted and, and could, could camp out. I loved that location because it was out in the middle of nowhere. 
um, right off the Tennessee River. No boats could get up in that section. You might see a kayak or a canoe once in a while. Once in a while, you might see you know someone else out there. But for the most part, when I went out there or took my family, it was just us and the fish and wildlife. And that was a phenomenal thing. I would love to do that. Um, can't, I'm here in Pennsylvania, still may find a fishing spot, but yeah, if I had a choice right now, that's always been my go-to when it comes to the outdoors is go and take my fishing line, throw it in the water, sit back and enjoy in nature at that time. But that one's a tough one. I think I'm gonna go with the horse-sized duck. I know it has a big beak and if it gets me, I'm in trouble. Um, but ducks can't run fast, so I'm hoping I might be able to outrun the duck. If it takes to wing, I'm trying to get underneath some cover. Um, and I'm trying to make sure I avoid that beak. And, you know, if I can get its legs out from under it, I've got a chance. But I'm thinking 100 little duck-sized horses, they're still going to be fast. They still bite. That's a lot of little bites to deal with. So I'm going with the, the horse-sized duck. Our college is very uh, intentional. We have a God-inspired mission, and we're very focused on that mission. It's a mission that I believe is at the heart of who I am, and so it's easy for me to graft onto that mission, and, and I see it being lived out. And because of that, we're very intentional in what we do. I think this time right now is showing just how innovative we are as a college. I think if you go back through our history, there are moments in our history where you see our innovation um, come to life in the way that we dealt with the pressures and the, and the struggles of the day. And I think this is one of those days, how quickly we are able to switch to virtual online learning um, and be able to keep the college functioning, I think is a, is a unique thing that's going on here where some colleges are struggling tremendously. And, and yet I, I feel like we're doing a good job. But in our athletic department, I, it's our culture. I've been on two other, I've been to two other colleges and I've, I've had a chance to go around and hear from some great successful programs. And the thing that always stands out to me is culture is incredibly important. Not just the culture of a team, but the culture of a department. And, and in our department, because of the intentionality of the school, we're intentional in our commitment to Christ. Um, that undergirds everything that we do, and I think that runs through all of our athletics programs. We have a commitment to excellence. Well, and as we know, we could, we could be very much an a, um, outcome-oriented program where it's all about the wins, but we're not. We're about doing things the right way. We're about doing things with excellence. Why? Because as we do that, we know that we're bringing glory to God. And so we are committed to that excellence and that comes out, that, that shows up in the coaching. I think it shows in our athletes and that they buy into this culture and want to be a part of it. And so we see excellence top to bottom. But the other thing that stands out to me is the commitment from our administration, from our athletic administration and our school administration to this concept of excellence. So much so that they are willing to do what is necessary in the right way to support our coaches and our teams. And, and that's having been at a higher level, having been at another scholarship level, um, having been at a larger college, at a smaller college. And, and it stands out to me that when a department stands behind their word, when they say we want to be excellent and we're gonna hold you accountable to being excellent and we're gonna give you the tools that you need to be excellent, I think that is absolutely critical um, to what makes Grove City so different. And anybody, any athlete that's looking for an opportunity to be their best, you come to Grove City, you're going to be challenged to be your best. You're going to be challenged to be excellent in what you do. And you're going to be encouraged and supported along the way. But as we do so, we're going to challenge and encourage and inspire you to investigate your relationship with Christ and make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. I think that's what makes Grove City so different.